Here with me today are Mr. Narayan Gangadhar, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Vinit Agrawal, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Etul Gutka, Higher Head, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisors. I trust all of you and your loved ones are safe and in good health. We have published a detailed investor presentation and issued a press release to stock exchanges. And I hope you had a chance to peruse them. I will comment on recent development and then Narayan and Vinit will walk you through the operational and financial performance for the quarter. Quarter 1 FY 2022 was marked by a resurgence of COVID cases. This wave of COVID-19 peaked in April 2021 before plateauing in May 2021 and declining in June 2021, that is last month. Because of the widespread effect, effect of pandemic on businesses throughout India, multiple uh, agencies revised their GDP estimate. However, with accelerated vaccination drives across the nation, economy activity has resumed. The Indian economy is resilient and with strong fundamentals in place, we are prepared to bounce back. In the midst of all this gloom, quarter one FI 2022 has been very strong for the broking industry. With quarterly performance continuing to achieve significant milestones, India's investor base continued to rise. With over 7 million new DMET accounts being added during this period, this number represents approximately 50% of new DMET accounts added for the whole of the last year. This strong addition in DMET accounts reflects the growing popularity and deepening penetration of equities in Tier 2 and 3 cities and beyond. While total DMET accounts reached 62 million on June 30, 2021, equity penetration in India continues to suffer, uh, continues to offer huge uh, growth opportunities, and our expectations are it will match, or in some cases exceed, those of peer economies in South Asia and mature economies in the West progressively. The narrowing gap between us and them gives me immense confidence that we will be able to sustain this journey of high growth over the medium and long term. This potential will be tapped largely by digital brokers, including angel broking, as we accelerate penetration further into tier two, tier three cities and beyond, using best in class digital products to give customers a state of art digital experience, thus expanding our share of overall market pie. This strong growth in DMET accounts has translated into corresponding growth in an active customer base on NSE, which grew by 3.5 million in quarter one FY 2022 to 22.4 million as of June 2021. Of this active incremental clients, approximately 77% were contributed by top five digital brokers. With angel broking amongst the leaders in this pack, as a result, the share of top five digital brokers in NSE active client base expanded by 467 basis point sequentially to 52% as of June 30, 2021. Angel has consistently improved its NSE active client base and now ranks third in India in terms of its client number. And I'm happy to inform you that Angel is now the largest listed broking house in the country. A significant part of this growth is attributed to our transformation into digital first and fintech business model, which has enabled us to redefine our processes by extensively using artificial intelligence and machine learning to enhance the digital experience of our clients, to entrench our strong connection with our clients and effectively communicate our product and service offering to our target audience, we have redefined ourselves from angel broking to angel one. As angel broking, we were perceived as a single product, traditional broking house. However, we needed to break this perception and create a better connection with the youth, Gen Z, millennials, and effectively communicate to them our bouquet of digital financial products and services, ranging from protection and wealth creation products to passive investment options through our AMC business all of which will be offered under the umbrella brand of Angel One. Over the next few quarters, we also plan to launch our super app, which will facilitate client access 
to all these products. Coupled with this, our focus will be on further improving the digital journey to give our clients a superior experience. This will lay the foundation for the next phase of our growth as we aim to attain market leadership in detailed stockbroking over the next few years. During this journey, we will be taking on board experts with exceptional digital prowess. This may lead to an increase in employee benefit expenses for two or three quarters, but will greatly complement the business by building an unprecedented team of experts with augmented artificial intelligence, machine learning capabilities, which will spearhead our growth initiatives. By taking these initiatives, we aim to make investing and wealth creation extremely easy, thereby deepening the penetration of investing across India. In FI 2021, we adopted a formal and more inclusive dividend policy to take care of the interest of shareholders. In this context, I am happy to share with you that for quarter one FI 2022, the board has recommended the distribution of 35% of this quarter's profit as a first interim dividend to the shareholders. I will now ask Narayan to give you a brief on operational aspect of the quarter. Narayan. Thank, thank you, Dinesh. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining us on the call today. As Dinesh mentioned, the industry witnessed strong growth even on a larger base during the quarter. I would like to emphasize here that Angel has played a key role in this growth. Q1 FY 2022 has been a very strong quarter for us across a whole bunch of parameters. We continued with our robust post client edition as we added 1.2 million in Q1 FY 2022 the highest we have achieved in any quarter till date. Of this, 0.46 million clients were added in June 2021. Again, our best monthly performance in terms of gross client addition. Our digital assets continued to attract more Gen Z and millennials from tier two, three, and beyond cities, which contributed to more than 93% of our gross client addition during the quarter. With younger clients being onboarded, the median age of our clients has dropped further to 29 years. Simple to use digital properties coupled with best in class digital journeys and simplified pricing led to 93% of gross client additions coming under our flat fee plan during the quarter. This overwhelming performance in client edition led to over 28% sequential growth in our client base to 5.3 million in June 2021, and thus creating another huge milestone for us. Correspondingly, our NSC active client base also grew by 26.5% sequentially to our historical best of approximately 2 million as of June 2021. This represents that over 37% of our overall active client base was active on NSE as of June 2021. As we added more active clients on NSE, our market clients points to sequentially to 8.8% as of June 21. This healthy growth across this healthy growth across overall and active client base also translated into 21.1% sequential growth in our average daily turnover to 4.5 trillion rupees and approximately 14% sequential growth in the number of trades to 248.5 million in Q1 FY 2022. During the quarter, we handled about 5.4 million peak trades in a single trading session thus highlighting our robust IT infrastructure. In June 2021, our turnover and turnover market share were partially impacted due to the implementation of phase three of peak margin regulations, apart from other market factors, when compared to April and May 2021. We expect this situation to normalize going forward. Despite this, our net broking revenue for the month of June was higher than the average for the quarter, 
and we achieve our best overall retail equity ADT or market share of 22.7% in Q1 FY 2022. On the innovation front, in June 2021, we launched Smart Store, an ecosystem that will serve as a marketplace for fintech-based products and services, including rule-based investing solutions and investor education services. Smart Store will also give traders a social forum to interact with each other. This platform will provide our clients with access to a variety of verified products and solutions at an affordable price that can potentially help them trade effectively. Our fintech partners get access to a marketplace where they can market their products to a large and growing client pool. Using our smart API, our clients will be able to bundle these solutions and trade seamlessly on our platform. We're also working on our super app which is expected to be rolled out later this year. Finally, we're still a very young in our journey, and there's going to be a lot of transformation that we will be undergoing in times to come. With the thought of providing best-in-class, seamless, and unique experience to our clients, we are continuously investing and in upgrading our technology expertise based on augmented use of data science to prove ability, reliability, and availability of all our platforms. Over the next 10 to 12 years, we foresee massive growth opportunity unfolding in the fintech industry. As Bharat opens up more aggressively to the idea of systematic wealth creation. Today, all of us are just at the inflection point of this fintech revolution. After being about a quarter old into the system, I'm sure that Angel has the skill set and the capability to attract the relevant talent to fill in the gaps progress towards our aim of attaining a leadership position over the next couple of years. With this, I now request Mr. Vineet Agarwal, our CFO, to give you a brief on the financial performance of the company. Thank you. Over to you, Vineet. Thank you, Naran. Good morning, everyone. And I once again thank you for joining us today. I will take you through the financial snapshot for the quarter gone by. As explained by Dinesh Bhai and Narayan, Angel continued to deliver an exceptionally strong performance on all operating parameters, which also translated into strong financial results for the quarter. In quarter one of financial year 2022, performance mirrors our strong momentum in business as we registered our highest ever gross revenue of Rs. 4,745 million. Some of the key drivers of our performance were strong client addition of 1.2 million, Robust 21% sequential growth in our average daily turnover to Rs. 4.5 trillion, with trades aggregating to over 245.5 million. A fledging client book which clocked a sequential growth of 26.5% to average at 12.2 billion. Quarter 1 of financial year 2022, revenue is bifurcated as follows. Gross broking revenue accounted for about 68% of our total gross revenues. Interest income, which includes interest on our client funding book and interest earned from deposits, accounted for 15%. Depository income contributed 6%. Income from distribution of third-party products was 1%, whilst other operating income con contributed 10%. In gross broking revenue, the contribution of our uh, FNO segment increased to approximately 63%, followed by cash, commodity, and currency at approximately 31%, 4%, and 1% respectively. During the quarter, we witnessed strong participation in the options and cash delivery segment, with the latter leading to a growth in our average daily client, our average client funding book to approximately 12.2 billion. After paying commission to our authorized persons, approximately 74% of the net broking revenue was contributed by our direct clients, while the balance is attributed to the clients of our authorized persons. Since we have been adding clients at a very brisk pace over the last two years, the net broking revenue from clients who are less than two years on our platform continues to remain high at 74% in quarter one, whilst the balance is contributed by more than two-year-old clients. Contribution of our net broking revenue by less than two-year-old clients and two-plus-year-old clients grew by 3x, and 3.7x and 2.4x in quarter one of financial year 2022 
over quarter one of financial year 2020 respectively. Our net broking revenue under the flat fee plan continued to witness strong momentum, having grown to a significant 76% of our overall net broking revenue. At the same time, the share of net broking revenue from the traditional plan in the total revenue pie, uh, total net revenue pie has been reducing consistently from 50% to 15% over quarter one of financial year 2020 to quarter one of financial year 2022. The finance cost increased to 164 million during the quarter, primarily on account of incremental borrowings to meet the working capital requirements. Employee benefit expenses increased by approximately 12% sequentially to rupees 561 million in quarter one of financial year 2022, mainly on account of annual revisions in payroll. Our other expenses rose to 1.12 billion with a 11.3% rise quarter on quarter on account of higher client acquisition, onboarding and engagement. The operating profit for quarter one stood at 1,663 million, translating to a 49% operating profit margin. Our profit after tax from continuing operations increased 19% sequentially to rupees 1,214 million, once again the highest ever for any quarter to date. Earnings per share grew to a robust 14.8 rupees per equity share on quarterly basis. Our quarter ending client funding book was at 15.2 billion, whereas our borrowing stood at 12.2 billion. All the above translated to a very healthy average return on equity from the business at 41.6%. With this, I conclude the presentation and open the floor for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may please press star and one on your touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from UTI Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, I thank you for taking my question. So, firstly, in our whole business model, when, whenever we had a market correction, the overall market value used to go down. And since we had a take rate as a possible market value. Your voice is a bit low. Is it audible now? Hello. Hello. Uh, please. There is some background yeah. noise. Uh, is it better at the moment? Yeah, it is better. Yeah, yeah, sorry for that. So, firstly, in our old business model, uh, since our take rate was based on the percentage of our value, and whenever there was a market correction, uh, ideally our broking revenue used to go down, right? But now, with the business model has changed, wherein it's a flat fee based business model, wherein it depends on the volumes, right? So, do you think it makes our business more resilient in terms of a market correction? So, volumes might not correct that much compared to a market value based model? Yeah, Mr. Agrawal, you are right. See, what happens like when market goes down, as rightly pointed out by you, uh, client tend to trade less, less. But now, because model is as per order, so what happens, even if a ticket size is low, our revenue does not drop uh, equivalent to a drop in turnover. Right. It is more right. resilient and plus uh, we being uh, on app now, we have seen that even lifetime value of customer has improved. So people who used to like uh, like uh, uh, trade less after a year or so, after completing right. these four quarters, what we are seeing, trend is improving from older customers also because they are on the right. app. Right. So like, do you have any data point to share like in terms of last couple of years, whenever there was a market correction, it volumes helped you be resilient. Like, for example, last year in March, when the market corrected like 30%, you do saw that time the volume helped you sustain some kind of broken revenue. If you have some data point, you can share. I don't think we have any data point on that to share right now. Vinit, right. Uh, there is anything on, uh, you can comment on this? Uh, 
Uh, no, we, right now we don't have any data point, but yes, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, mobile app model, uh, the digital model definitely helps, uh, you know, uh, the stickiness of the client as well as the fact that uh, clients trade less uh, in terms of the volume, but in terms of the number of orders, uh, the behavior is uh, continuing. For example, uh, Mr. Agrawal, if you see this uh, peak margin uh, kind of like when it was implemented, there's an impact on turnover, but uh, we don't see much impact on uh, uh, our revenue, proportionate yes. to impact that we are seeing on turnover. Yes. Got it. Got it. So secondly, uh, I want to understand if you're facing any hindrance in terms of getting uh, like market share in the FNO volumes, because uh, as per the regulations, for example, in case of index, uh, there's a 15% limit that a broker can go, right, in terms of open interest. And in terms of MBA, it's 30, I think it's 20%. Yeah. Right. So do you think it will impact your volumes at a later stage? Not now, but do you see that impacting our ability to grow your market share? See, Mr. Agrawal, still we are far away from that limit. And uh, so... That way, we are not uh, like uh, would not be impacted in near future. Okay, okay, so got it. So in the retail side, we had like currently you're selling the Q1, we had 22% kind of market share in the SNO retail turnover, right? Yeah, right. So uh, can you share? Do you know like oh, what is the split between the retail turnover versus institutional turnover in the? Uh, Uncle Shri would request you to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Nidesh Jain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. First, uh, first please, if I look at the MPF book, it has grown 26% sequentially, but our interest income has not uh, grown proportion to that. Uh, interest income growth is around 15% sequentially. Uh, so what is the reason for that? Uh, the interest income uh, comprises of uh, both the uh, interest we earn from the client funding book as well as the interest we earn from fixed deposits uh, that we place with the uh, exchanges uh, as margins. So while the client funding book, the uh, you know the interest uh, that we charge on the client funding book remains same, but there has been a, a decline in the uh, interest that we earn from the uh, fixed deposits. So uh, the client funded book continues to remain uh, strong with the same rate of interest. The uh, rate of interest that we charge to our clients is about 18% for the MTF funding. Okay, okay. So it is largely because of the decline in the interest on fixed deposit that we keep with the checks. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And secondly, uh, we are uh, uh, transforming ourselves from a pure brokerage uh, broker uh, uh, to a uh, more holistic uh, uh, financial services player. Uh, so we have articulated that we will be launching our uh, asset management uh, platform, which will take probably two years uh, from now to complete the process. Uh, so apart from these two products, which is asset management product and uh, the broking product, what all other products we uh, we expect to add uh, in our super app that we are planning to launch over next two to, two to three quarters? Hello? I think there is some problem on the line. Uh, can you just hold on for a few seconds, please? Uh, Mr. Thakkar, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, should I repeat my question? Yeah, I was unable to hear you because I got disconnected. Yeah, sure, sure. So, I was saying that uh, uh, we are uh, transforming from a pure brokerage player uh, to a holistic, uh, more comprehensive financial services uh, player. 
uh, we have already articulated that we will be launching our asset management product, which will take probably around two years time from now. Uh, but there are whole set of other financial service products which uh, fintech companies are planning to offer, like lending, uh, like insurance, like other, other uh, segments. So what all other segments we plan to add into our uh, uh, super super app that we are planning to launch. Yeah, so uh, currently uh, we are offering all other services like third-party product, mutual fund, um, uh, insurance, and lending product, third-party product. We don't, we are not manufacturers in that. So in the super app, in this journey, investors who are coming for broking services, they would be able to uh, select their mutual fund. They would be able to do their insurance uh, kind of like uh, business on our platform. Plus. Uh, we would be offering them lending product from other banking banks. So overall, the super app would be uh, a kind of a one-stop solution for investors who start their journey in stock market, but eventually when they want to uh, buy mutual fund or create some kind of like wealth through acquiring uh, mutual fund or going for insurance product, this app would be helpful for them to manage total uh, kind of like financial solution uh, their requirement of all financial products. Unless, uh, until we, in two years, we are able to start manufacturing our own product, which would be more passive and ETF products, which will help investor to take advantage of this equity as an asset class. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, and any expectation on the uh, on the revenue that we expect from the other 12 steps we are adding. So uh, today our, our distribution income is pretty small in overall uh, revenue. Uh, any expectation or guidance uh, uh, yeah. so or target that you are setting that up? We there? are in that uh, kind of process of launching our super app, which will take at least two quarters from here. So we are expecting once this super app is launched, we would see a good revenue coming from this third party products. But for this uh, two quarters, we don't see substantial change in our revenue mix. Maybe post, uh, like uh, in the last quarter, we can see some more kind of traction from third-party products. And in, and in the super app, the customer will also be able to trade. So there will be only one app. Yeah, can... there will be only one app. That's the reason, actually, uh, when we change our name from Angel Broking to Angel One, what you want to signify is that all your financial uh, product would be available on one app. So on this app, they will be able to tra trade. That is what actually we want to achieve. That on the same app when person is trading for stocks, how we can uh, build a more journey so that we are able to understand customer better and offer them solution for their needs or for future. So what happens when we get into that kind of like uh, trajectory of customer looking for wealth creation on our app, a lifetime value of the same customer increases. So cost of acquisition remains same, but additional revenue that we get straight away it comes to our bottom line. Yeah, yeah understood. And last question, uh, you mentioned that uh, you will be focusing on digital hiring, uh, and uh, you also articulated that there will be increase in the employee cost. But any any quantification on the employee expense that one should expect over FI21 base uh, for FI22? See, currently we are in the midst of hiring process. So it would be very difficult to give number uh, uh, in terms of how much increase it would be. But I can say one thing that, see, we are looking at kind of like a client growth, which is growing at a triple digit rate. So we would be able to manage uh, this cost within these parameters, what uh, guidance we have given for our uh, margins. So with this uh, margin guidance of around 49 to 50%, we would be able to accommodate all this cost within these two, three quarters. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avay Agarwal from Cyber Serica Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Dinesh Ji, Vineet, and the uh, rest of the team. Uh, I have a question related to, you know, uh, this uh, a uh, variable margin requirement that is going to further go up from 75% to 100% from September 1. So we have seen already that, you know, that has impacted the ADT uh, in recent months, though the number of new customers has increased, but the ADT has remained the same, I guess, that peak margin is 
creating pressure not only on on angel one but also the rest of the industry players uh, including exchanges like mcx so what is your expectation what will happen to your adt you know once this goes up to 100% from september 1 or do you think there is a possibility that sebi may reconsider by then the peak margin requirement and keep it either at 75% or actually bring it down so you know if you can just share your thoughts on that yeah on peak margin requirement as a, every quarter i say that there would be an impact on adtu but because our revenue is generated by a number of orders at a client places so what we have seen impact on revenue is not very kind of like substantial it is just in the tune of 2 to 3% and that is offsetted by growth in our customer base so going forward now we are coming to that last tranche of this implementation i don't feel that cb is going to defer this but because we work on what is announced if something is announced which is better than that we will see some positive uh, thing but what we are seeing is our revenue may get impacted by just 2 or 3% maximum every uh, tranche we have seen impact is to the revenue is 2 to 3% but impact on turnover is higher but okay. because our is a flat fee base so impact of 2 3 is offsetted by a growth in customer base which is growing at the rate of almost like 15 to 20 percent every quarter so we are not expecting any big hit from this last tranche of peak margin implementation okay no thank you very much that is very useful thank you dinesh thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pratik poda from nikon india mutual fund please go ahead Yeah, hi. So, couple of questions. One is uh, in your annual report, you talk about this project Spark, right? The the uh, sorry, new product offering, which is Spark. Can you just talk a bit about that? That session number one. Secondly, uh, with uh, as, as we have discussed in this call, that incrementally ADTO is not a driver for Angel anymore. Is market share or looking at ADTO market share of any relevance? And lastly, sir, uh, I think you talked extensively about in your annual report about well tech, right? Becoming a well tech platform. Uh, I just wanted to ask, in terms of uh, uh, employees or you know filling up gaps, where are these uh, positions or what you, what needs to be done so that at least uh, from a, a foundation perspective, we are there. Okay. Pratik, uh, on your first question about Spark, Spark is uh, like a first leg of super app. So a super app would be built on this platform, which we pet named it Spark, but that will replace Angel One. Uh, once it is ready in two quarters so this app would be having all journeys uh, apart from stock broking it would be having journeys for mutual fund insurance lending product all third party products and going forward when we would be uh, uh, entering to amc business so this would be the app which would be like an interface for a customer to consume all our services so we expecting that by next two quarters we'll be able to launch this app and now coming on your second question on adtu adtu definitely uh, uh, gets impacted but as we have gone to flat booking plan we look at number of orders and customers engagement so market share definitely is uh, relevant because in digital players there will be only few players who will be dominant uh, in terms of uh, like uh, generating revenue and being profitable so our aim is to be number 1 and within few years Uh, we want to be there the only way we are tracking is to increase our market share in acquisition and market turnover third thing on wealth tech already we have taken lots of steps as uh, last time i had discussed that arc is, uh, is is an engine which is going to help us to generate kind of like a smart beta product so already lots of kind of like investment has gone in creating lots of back end which can help us to give uh, kind of like better returns and uh, give a passive products which can engage lots of customer who are entering the market with a low ticket size so even with ticket size of around 25 30000 we can give guide him with a good kind of like portfolio but what happens once we are uh, going in well tech with amc being an interface we can reduce our ticket size to lower which can help lots of tier 2 tier 3 people to consume this products so in terms of wealth tech i think we have taken uh, lots of kind of like uh, 
back end uh, kind of like uh, innovation and plus currently whatever recruitment we are doing this recruitment is mostly on uh, people who are uh, good at machine learning artificial intelligence creating better journey for customers so in this two or three quarters you will see lots of cost on this front getting uh, front ended uh, over here but good thing is that because there is a good growth in broking business we would not be uh, like uh, suffering in terms of bringing uh, uh, getting in this front end can fan like cost which is overbearing on our margins so we would be able to retain this margin maybe one or two quarter we have to build this resources but this same resource is going to help us to build a better journey for stock broking mm-hmm. so that will give us more customer engaged on our platform and we will be able to generate more revenue from the same set of customers Okay, just to conclude, sir, this means that your lifetime value of a customer increases because you know you are adding these third-party products, and also the engagement level or engagement metrics is increases, right? That is what your eventual end plan is. That by the end of the year, with the launch of Super App, uh, the lifetime value of a customer increases multifold. Plus, the engagement levels, which were earlier only limited to broking, will now further increase. Yeah, you are right. So, purpose is that once you acquire a customer, cost of acquisition is up, and we have already taken. so when we offer other products and they are able to consume this product lifetime value increases because when they consume this mutual fund insurance which is their kind of like uh, uh, lifetime goals they are going to remain with us lifetime till the time they are enjoying our app that is the reason we want to make this app very engaging so that people who have, who have come on the platform just for broking they find this app more relevant even for their other needs financial needs so that is the reason we feel that total lifetime value of the customer will increase and even experience the customer would have would be very easy and convenient to do all the transaction on one app so if i may ask just one small question on smart store which you have launched if you can just help us understand the revenue model over there because i think you are on it's a platform right you are onboarding fintechs on your platform as well as the customer can access those technologies of those fintechs and trade via angel so it's a win win for both uh what kind of uh, uh, number of users were signed up for smart store and what kind of engagement levels are we seeing because that itself can become a data monetization property or a value creator uh, digital property for you so maybe some some uh, numbers over there would be really helpful it at all it would be very early to give numbers right now but uh, i would uh, ask we need to uh, sorry uh, narend to talk on this because it's a very unique concept Yeah. I give you a brief of this. See, India. If you see, you know, there are lots of young engineers who are building lots of solution for niche investors, all go traders and all that. So, what we uh, thought that the world is moving towards platform. World is moving towards where we are able to get lots of people who use our API, who use our uh, uh, technology skill set, and plus, very important thing is. when they create a solution big cost goes into marketing that product that is where our customer base of around 53 lakh come into play where people who develop a good solution and clients are able to get a better kind of like uh, uh, solution for them where we would be having a revenue sharing model on technology side i would ask narayan to briefly talk on this yeah thank you dinesh So as uh, Dinesh Bhai mentioned, we are creating this unique platform on the smart store side to let people build and explore a wide range of trading applications on the platform. And what we have seen is when developers uh, they sign up to this service, to this unique service, they get a set of features right out of the box for free. That includes the profiling of the customers. that includes the ability to trade on our platform that in using apis and that includes the ability to get analytical data about how their apps are performing in real time so this helps developers create a very unique set of experiences and launch them on a platform which can also then be leveraged by other users so as dinesh bhai mentioned we have uh, more than uh, as of this as of uh, this week we have more than 100000 unique users actually on this platform and uh, you know we are averaging a significant amount of uh, you know 
you know, a non a non significant amount of revenue, which is already being uh, you know traded essentially on the platform. So the way I see it is this is only going to continue to grow to eventually becoming a mainstream product for it for us. But right now we're very happy with the traction we are seeing early. Um, uh, which customer set would be most apt for that, that particular strategy? And is there a match being then given to the customer to, you know, use that strategy, which is a win-win, right? Because the customer wins, the fintech company also wins, and your platform becomes more stronger. Is that what you're trying to do over here? I mean, is that a value proposition which you're doing? Yes, let yes. me come over here. Exactly. See, yeah. uh, today if you see trend is youth wants to do some kind of like data testing, they want Correct. to do some Back to training. Training. that's yeah. a big uh, kind of community which is again getting created and there are lots of engineers who are creating solutions for this youth but the only thing that we have to be a person uh, on an organization who matches the both end there are creators of this kind of solution and there are people users who are big in number but progressively if you see you know when we talk about like financial services and all that there are lots of solutions needed which will use our apis but this would be niche solutions for a niche market. But we would be creating a platform where customer can come, look at their requirement, check which app is uh, relevant to them, and try uh, and start using that on our platform. That way, even a person who is creating the solution is, gets an access to our resources plus our market, and customer gets a best of service. Thank you. We would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions as we have several participants waiting for their turn. The next question is from the line of Kajal from ICICI Diplopsy. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, in the opening remarks, uh, uh, it was told that out of the total clients support, almost 93% came on the flat fee platform. So just wanted to understand, because earlier we were saying, Almost 20% of client acquisition happens through the AP model. So is that changing now and the direct model is working more? And how are the clients as of now acquired? Which modes are working faster? Uh, Vinit, you have numbers on this? Just to briefly, I'll tell you that, see, when we say 93% are using flat fee, uh, for just for information, even we allow AP, to offer this flat fee to that customer. So although our revenue would be coming from AP, but lots of can, can find like uh, 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 plans which are sold by AP is flat fee. So under the flat fee plan, uh, uh, during quarter one of financial year 2022, we acquired uh, 11 lakh 25 thousand clients, and under the traditional plan, we acquired about 80 thousand clients. Okay. Well, which modes are working more for it? Like in this 11 lakh 25,000, uh, which modes of acquisition have worked better? And in terms of cost of acquisition, how they have been? Uh, see, like uh, digital acquisition engine definitely is optimized to a level where it is giving a good numbers. So most of these numbers are coming from uh, direct B2C uh, uh, acquisition. And... Uh, um, Vinit, you have number on uh, breakup of uh, the acquisition channels? Uh, no, sir, we don't share that. Okay. Uh, okay. Just to like uh, give you a sense that see, most of this growth is coming from digitally uh, acquiring a uh, we, are, we are acquiring channel, and AP model definitely it is a physical uh, model, so their growth is lesser. Okay. So, and, uh, one question on the uh, technology cost. So last quarter, I think we had shared that almost 30% of the other expenses, which was around 47, 48 crore, is the technology cost. So what would be that number around in this quarter? Vinit? Yeah, it will be the same. Uh, so as I mentioned, about uh, 13 to 14% of our uh, total cost, excluding the finance and uh, commission uh, that we share with the subbrokers, uh, that uh, uh, proportion continues. 13 to 14 or 30 to 40? No, 13 to 14. I had mentioned 13 to 14, not 30 to 14. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak K from Jerry Capital. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats for good set of numbers. I have a question regarding ARPU. ARPU has come down uh, a bit uh, compared to the last quarter. So, would you, you know, would you, uh, can you point out the the reason for the for the decline? You know, are there any any of you know offers or or series that you're offering which has led to the such a decline? And I have another question on the activation rate. So, uh, this rate has uh, has been consistently high from the last four or five quarters. You know, if, if the market you know, if the market doesn't do as as well as, as it is doing right now, can there be uh, an impact on the activation rate going forward? Okay. I don't know whether we give a number on ARPU. It's no, derived no, number, I think. So. Yeah, so it's a derived number. It is derived number. Right. So because, right. like, uh, now new set of customers, we are, as, as I said, that in AP also we are acquiring customer on flat fee, so I am not sure how it has been divided. When there is any data on that? No, we do not share uh, any ARPU related data. Okay, let me come to second question okay. of activation. See, activation again, like uh, I, I am seeing, it is a function of one uh, active uh, volatility in the market. Second is people who are coming from tier two, tier three. No, most of the customer are coming from that pocket. Over there, we are not seeing a major impact uh, because of volatility currently. Because if you look at our uh, last quarter number, as we said, even June, we, saw, we did not see a significant drop in volume where volatility in the market had reduced substantially. So we are seeing because we are more exposed to Tier 2, Tier 3, where customers are new, that ticket size may be lower. But in terms of revenue, yeah. they are almost equivalent to our majority of the customer that we acquire. So overall, I don't feel that uh, volatility would be having a major impact, although there is an impact. Always there would be an impact of volatility, but not to the tune where we see a significant drop. Right. As you, as you mentioned ticket size, uh, do you have any number as to what is the average ticket size, I mean, average investment account uh, of, of, the, uh, of the customers and, you know, of, of the customer side right now? When is, we have uh, shared any ticket size number? That uh, we don't share. We don't share the ticket size of individual clients. Okay, no problem. So just you know, just one more question on R2. So what I've done is I've just divided the broking revenue by the active, average number of active clients. Uh, during the during this quarter and the last quarter, so you know earlier it was uh, that number was 2064 in March quarter and now it, it has come down to 1800 and 1800 uh, kind of a number. So essentially, you know whatever revenue you're making on each client per quarter has has come down a little. So I just wanted to understand will will this trend kind of continue, is it the new base, uh, you know, okay, can we consider it a new base or is there a, there's a possibility of further decline or can, can it come back up uh, going forward? See, as I said that uh, maybe in March, uh, uh, we may not be adding much number on AP side on flat fee, but what we are seeing, the yeah. sources that we acquire, RP is almost like consistent. There is a few fluctuation because of peak margin and volatility, but not to the tune which should be like uh, concerning us. But when we add a new channel, we look at unit-wise economy. Mm. If that is working, we would like to be uh, uh, acquiring customer on that front also. Like as we introduce or we pushed uh, our AP uh, to uh, uh, offer flat fee to their customer, we do our working back end. It may appear that uh, overall our pool has reduced from that pool. I'm unable to specifically tell you on your question of 2000 and 1800, just I'm giving you an example. So when this new source of customer comes, which is AP uh, driven, we don't have a cost of equation on that. But whatever fees uh, they generate or uh, revenue they generate, it is just shared with us. So in terms of unit-wise economy, it is far better. But it may impact the overall output. It may appear to be lower from that source. That is what maximum I can share with you right now. Right. Um, if, if I can squeeze in one more question. So, will there be any linearity between, uh, you know, the growth rate of your active clients and the growth rate, uh, growth of, of revenue, especially the broking revenue? Or will the broking revenue growth still always be lower than uh, uh, than your uh, client edition growth rate? See, you have to add some factor. Always you will see there is no uh, correlation between 
growth in uh, customer turnover and revenue. So you have to see few quarters, whatever factor was there, it would be growing with that factor. So overall we don't see, as I said, dip in quality, but what happens many times, because of different, different kind of like customer coming from different, different source, so it may not be linear in terms of number of customers that we acquired and growth in revenue proportionately. We would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, just one question which was related to your flat fee pricing. So, you know, because of this extremely high growth in client base that uh, that uh, the industry is seeing in terms of the discount broking industry. Um, do you see any chances of um, or any, uh, you know, probability of increasing about lowering of the flat fee for the various products like uh, intraday and FNO, etc.? See, currently I don't see any kind of like uh, gain in market share because of lowering the fees. Because if you see, this fees is just small part of uh, uh, cost that a customer pays. So I think customer is looking at more engaging journeys built in the app. So what I see is that that's the reason we are building a cost on technology side. Not only we are building it for super app, but what happens this kind of like uh, talent which comes in, the improver is on a journey related to stockbroking. So what I see is that organization who is able to build a good journey, invest a good on a technology team, they will be able to grow their client base and this client base will continue only if you continue investing in this tech uh, assets. But otherwise reducing flat, uh, flat fees is not going to give incremental market share. Already one or two players have tried, you know it, I don't want to name them they were unable to get any major market share. In fact, they reverted back to the same flat fee. Understood, sir. And uh, secondly, you know, while we are building this super app, and maybe Narayan may be able to answer this question a little bit better, but I think globally we have also seen that, um, you know, when you have too many things at the same place, generally those sort of super apps, I don't know if there are, many global peers which have uh, done a lot of success in this, that a particular area. I think mostly, uh, you know, apps which are focused on a particular category have sort of done very well. And uh, so, I mean, how are we planning to think about it? That if you offer too many things, would our positioning get diluted uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how we are perceived by the customers and uh, when an incremental customer comes, what is his expectation? Um, so how are we thinking about that, uh, you know, rather than being, being a focused player compared to, you know, trying to do everything at the same time and maybe diluting our positioning or experience in terms of the uh, new customers? Mr. Gupta, excellent question. I will ask Narayan to answer, but let me just briefly touch upon that. Okay, we have been always been a focus player. We, our aspirations are clear to be number one in broking industry. Because we know when any industry goes digital, there are big kinds of benefit being number one or number two. So we would not like to compromise on that position. Never we have done. Angel, if you see from beginning, we have been focused on detail broking and we want to be number one. But what we are seeing now, capabilities of apps are such that without diluting that experience, we can enhance the experience by building lots of other journeys. Here I would ask Narayan to step in. Yeah, thank you, Dinesh. So as uh, Dinesh mentioned, right, broking and uh, trading, they remain our core areas and core focus for our business. So our entire app strategy is built around making that experience very seamless for the end user. And, you know, you are right that having more journeys, it tends to overload the application. But at the same time, having those journeys built in a way that is very responsive using machine learning and, uh, uh, you know, user, uh, user filtering techniques really helps us build a best-in-class experience, which is tailor-made for a particular client. 
So their overall experience and immersiveness with the application actually only gets better. That is really the experience that we are building and uh, we are investing in on Angel. So our super app strategy is not like uh, the other uh, super app strategies where we uh, where we envision building uh, you know three or four different type of disconnected workflows or three or four different types of different app experiences in the same app. That's not how we see it. We see ourselves as building a single unified experience, which is very intuitive, which is built on understanding the customer, and it is built on maximizing the return and the value that they get by spending time on the app. That is how we are looking at building our product strategy. So ease of use and ease of understanding comes first. Thank you, sir, for patiently answering all the questions and uh... Also, thank you for the dividends flowing in. I think that's a good step. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anshuman Dev from ICSA Security. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question was regarding this uh, less than two-year-old uh, client portfolio that you have. Uh, so uh, because it's less than two years old, any kind of, so what gives us confidence in this customer profiling because we are less than two years, right? So you may, may have seen the, the amount of cycles that you have seen with them is lower. So uh, what gives you confidence about this customer base and how much of them are new to a market? If you could give some color on this particular segment, that's my only question. Thank you. Yeah. See, one thing is that we map our old customer and new customer in terms of their behavior in first year and second year and we track that deviations. So what we are seeing, there are positive deviations in customer who have been acquired digitally and who are trading digitally. So that gives us our confidence that if track record of one, two year was better than that old customer, so going forward, it would be better. One, because this new set of customers are trading through app. And we have seen in the market, like uh, if a customer is not trading for two, three months, in a physical market, he used to lose customers, uh, dealers contact, or dealers to attract. In app world, app is always there. There's no attrition. So whenever this customer wants to come back, he has to just start uh, trading or investing back uh, through this app. So that's the reason we believe that lifetime value of this customer would be higher than that old customer. Looking, tracking every quarter's activity with that old customer. That is where we feel that this model is going to work uh, better. What was the second question? I just missed that. Sorry. Yeah, my second question is, well, like, how much of them are new to market? And yeah, if you could yeah, also say, yeah. like, what is the wealth base of this customer? Are they very, uh, you know, in the sense, like, um, uh, you, you know, are they speculative or they they are, uh, you know, very uh, in terms of also capable in terms of their have considerable amount of pockets? Right, right. Almost uh, more than 70% people who are coming uh, on our app are new to the market. So we are able to build kind of like educational programs for them so that they are able to understand this equity journey uh, better. So we have seen be it an old uh, customer who came in physical world or a new customer. They start their activity exposed in equity by trading, by having high expectation. Then after two, three years they realize and they go towards kind of like um, uh, mutual fund, investment, deliveries, and all that. So I think journey in terms of this new youth and previous uh, customer who used to come to the industry is same. What is different? This youth is very social media savvy. He is learning these tricks very fast. I know people like uh, from old economy, they should take years to understand options. Over here, youth, they are able to hear experts, they are able to use all go formulas and are able to uh, like uh, hedge their risk better than people who did not knew about these instruments. So what I am seeing that these are the youth who are getting into that, their first salary or earning from their business and they are straight away starting journey with equity. One, because equity is giving better return than risk-free assets uh, compared to previous generation which to get 10% and equity returns were expected to be around 11-12% at that time. Today, when we're expecting corporate earning to grow at 14-15%, and 
and risk-free assets are giving less return. So definitely when this youth is starting his journey from his initial uh, uh, paying days, these are the ones who would be wealth bearers in next 15 to 20 years. So being into a fintech world, we have to get this youth early in their stage to use our app. If you believe that our economy is going to grow at the nominal rate of 12-13%, in next 20 years you will see GDP growing at 50, by 15 to 16 x majority of the wealth would be created by this youth. So we are not looking at what wealth base they have today. We are looking what wealth they would be having in next decade or so. So I think Apple FinTech world is all about serving this small ticket size and giving best of service. Because in technology world, there is no incremental expenses. There are one-time expenses. And once we achieve scale, we can serve any customer at any cost. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. Really interesting. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Ashok from the Lalan Bosa Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, okay. congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have uh, two questions. So, the cash turnover market share has been dropping continuously. Is it only because of the peak margin norms and will it revive in the coming quarters because your cash turnover market share has now come to 13.8% from 16.3%. That dip has been quite uh, high in this Q, Q4 to Q1. Although in the previous quarters, it's, the drop was very low. So this will it normalize and even in incremental market share, BMAT account, there has been a slight dip to 16.6% from 17.6% in Q4. Uh, so will this uh, change going forward or is it a one-off? And then what is the, uh, you know, any initiative you are taking to make your clients more active, like your client activation rate is 37% uh, is what I heard, but uh, the competitors, act, although they have, obviously they have a lower client base, their uh, activation rates are a bit higher at around 55-60%. So is there any way by which uh, you are planning to increase your activation rate? Because now that all have onboarded, so rather than focusing on continuously increasing clients, will the strategy be to make the existing clients active? Yeah, okay, one uh, cash uh, market uh, share which had dropped and now it is progressively improving. Vinit, you have number on cash market share? It is 13.8%. No, for no, Q1 it doesn't progressively, uh, I think, uh, if we share that number, I will just... Yeah, sure. And on your second uh, question, uh, let this data come. On uh, this thing, uh, active customer base, I think our uh, ratio is better than industry. Industry is at around 33% and we are around 37%. Having said this, we are, as, we, as I said, that we are working on lots of journeys, to how to make customer more engaged and make them more active. So uh, like uh, as we are hiring more talent on artificial intelligence and machine learning, so that is where our data centers would work on how to understand customers who have onboarded, who are on our app, what are the needs they have, and how to give them a solution to make them more active. So going forward, we are going to see a better activation ratio on our app. Having okay. said that, currently we are better than industry. That is what data suggests. Uh, let me just come to on that cash market uh, share. Vinit, you have that? Yeah. So the cash market share for the last three months, it's an average of about 14%. So um, we saw some impact because of the first June phase implementation, but uh, that we've seen in the past as well. In the month in which the, uh, you know, the phase comes into effect, we see a momentum, momentous uh, decline, but then, you know, it gets back to normal. So, Akshay, what we can see is that maybe after uh, a few, uh, one or two quarters when this peak market margin is implemented completely, we will see this will bounce back because there are lots of things we can just work out on making this customer active on delivery front. But yes. whenever there's an one uh, kind of like installment of peak margin, there's a knee jerk reaction. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Mistri from Moonshot Ventures. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. We can hear you. Actually, I have two questions. Uh, questions to Narayan, sir, because uh, 
as we have seen that community and making community is very important for the sustained flyable effect to ensure the long term ltv of the company so what we are doing to ensure that we have a strong better community of traders at the same time for investors and how we are going to challenge uh, the money control app which you know because it is whole community uh, moving around that can you throw some light on it not in lancer but uh, before that we are not competition to money control in fact we should allow communities to be formed anywhere where they like where they think that topic what they are interested is discuss because to form kind of a platform where we try to make community is i would say is not a right approach let it be with uh, those organization or those site which have a kind of a like good a population or talking on the topic having said we are also building lots of community within our app so uh actually this market has expanded because of this community being formed as i said that youth is far social media savvy so he finds it like very uh, kind of a like uh, 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 educational to go to some community neutrally understand what they have to say so we would not like to put a color that all community has to be formed under our app naren if you want to add on this yeah thank you dinesh actually it is exactly what uh, dinesh uh, just mentioned right because we want to be an open and fair marketplace and we believe that the key to creating that marketplace is to allow open access to our apis so that innovators can come and build best in class products for a much larger audience than exists today so the way we facilitate building that cohort that set of cohorts that set of community is by encouraging people to build a platform and by increasing our awareness using social media initiatives on whatsapp on facebook on on a whole bunch of different uh, on youtube you know by building more of these channels so that users get more and more data so they can get continue to get more and more data which is more relevant to their trading style and that is really the the strategy that uh, that i see us uh, you know building on over the next couple of years but i absolutely uh, think that you know it's not uh, we don't want to be in the business of uh, especially money control or any of the things that you mentioned earlier which is what finish was mentioning okay okay mike actually i want to understand that uh, we have launched a product known as smart budge so i try to correlate with it whether it will have a community part and whether we will leverage that to make sure that person who has become less interested let's suppose for two or three months that then he can just come and see what happening in the stock market and then we give a nudge to him to trade so i am extrapolating on the smart bus platform and all that can you yeah uh, yeah because uh, see yeah we yeah. will be providing lots of kind of relevant content but as i said that as uh, narayan also said we would like to allow our apis to be used by other uh, platforms so that we are able to form a bigger community where content related to broking what has to be given to customer we will provide but there are lots of general information which is available across a different different platform so to cover okay. everything on one platform is not okay. possible we will give relevant content but there are lots of content which are available across a different platform so we would like to integrate all that content also within our app or within our digital uh, properties okay one, one last question on uh, angel spark we have already started a journey on that and my question is that whether we will start fine tuning algos afterwards uh, after 6 months or we will having we already having data management platform of our older data should we start fine tuning those data right now when we will leverage that after 6 months sudden as soon as we launch the app naren you would like to answer this yeah so that's a very good question i mean we have a rich history of our data which has been uh, you know used by ma- by millions of customers over the last several years so i first want to say that you know our existing product is already best in class if you look at our rating if you look at people's feedback it is one of the best products if not uh, you know it's easily one of the top with you know been in the top 2 or 3 products today in the space now we want to leverage this data and provide a even better experience 
to our product, to our customers. When we officially launch Spark, as Dinesh Bhai mentioned early on, you know, in the next two or three quarters. So yes, we will be using that data, but also we will be continuing to learn from our new customers because we we are adding, you know, we are adding so many customers every single month that we are also continuing to learn about what the new customers want, what profiling works, what the preferences should be. And that is where I think you will see a lot of innovation in Spark over what you already see today in our existing app. Okay, okay. Uh, my last question is that key, we are we have added most of our clients within last one year and a couple of years, but our activation rate is very low. It's not we, we are not comparing with the industry because we are not competing with the industry. We are the leaders in the industry, so our activation rate should be better than leader. Leader is having activation rate of over sixty percent. We are having thirty seven percent. How we are going to bridge that gap? See. Everyone has a different kind of like equation routes. And as I said, what we look at uh, unitwise economy for different, different sources. So if we just restrict ourselves from one source, we can get a better active customer. But what I am seeing is that from different, different sources, when customer is young or uh, like is not very active initially, but they become active at a later stage. So right now we are grabbing every land which is available where economically it makes sense for us to acquire and generate revenue and make it profitable within the year that we acquire. So our game plan is uh, a bit different. It will vary from person to person, organization to organization. What we are looking at is that when we are acquiring customers from different, different sources, what is their activation ratio? More than that, what is the unit wise economy we are achieving from that particular customer? So we are not averse to just uh, attracting very active trader or a person who is low ticket size. We are open to uh, everybody who wants to use our platform. But in that, definitely activation ratio of an investor is different than a trader. So we are not, when we are optimizing our dig uh, uh, digital equation kind of engines, we are not optimizing just for an active trader. Even we want a customer who just invests one day or two days in a year, but we know his lifetime value would be much higher because that person is not burning his capital. So we'll look at unit-wise economy. Based on that, we acquire our market share. Thank you. Next question from the line of Rajesh Vora from Genmai Venture Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Dinesh. Uh, congratulations to you and the team for a blockbuster results and a phenomenal client acquisition that you have done. My question is about last call you mentioned that uh, going forward, you continue to reinvest the incremental margins that you make due to this massive scale up and the, and the uh, concurrent cost in technology and uh, OPEX is not going to be in line with revenues, obviously, given the tech platform. So that's a very powerful uh, uh, model to go after. Not many companies have that luxury. Given that as maybe, uh, and the fact that two-thirds of current client of 5.3 million, three and a half million are acquired in just last 15 months, which is phenomenal. Uh, how do you, can you weave in your thoughts about uh, margins being reinvested? Because you will have problem of plenty on margins given the way you are you have been growing. So can this growth engine continue the way? I mean, uh, I'm not asking about next quarter or uh, you know next three quarters. I'm looking at next three years, five years. Can we continue to grow at breathtaking speed and also maintain margins? And if if that is the case. There is so much money to be reinvested because incremental costs are not that high. So I'm not looking for a number here, but more a color on a complexion of the, the journey that will happen over the next three, five years. Rajesh, very intelligent question, I would say. And a person who has tracked digital kind of like organization, for I think this is a kind, quite, quite relevant question. That's the reason in my speech I told that we would be onboarding lots of experts on uh, the thing, uh, uh, data scientist, our machine learning, uh, having machine learning capabilities, because we want to invest in tech uh, and tech-related people. Because going mm -hmm. forward, we are looking at market which will be more evolved than what it is today. So we have to invest in future, but we have enough kind of like margin, incremental revenue that we generate that 
has mm. an in, uh, uh, increase uh, can better margin than that previous uh, client base so continuously what we will be doing is that because we have to upfront this cost that the reason in my initial speech i told for two or three quarters we have budgeted a good amount of uh, uh, the things expenditure which will go towards building this kind of an like talent pool with us not only talent pool how to scale up our uh, kind of an like data centers and all that so that we are ready for next 2 3 years but good thing is hmm. that still after spending all this we are confident that we will be able to maintain our margins that is because incremental business is giving lots of margin if we don't invest today we are not looking at future we are just looking at present so what we are looking at we are trying to balance current quarters plus we are trying to look at next 3 5 years sure that's very useful dinesh bhai and the other side i mean we have been uh, as as you rightly mentioned and also nara and that you know it's just the beginning in terms of your digital model just couple of years ago and that couple of years has been uh, fantastic uh, uh, given the way this has been a dream run so far it has probably beaten your own internal expectation also i don't know uh, uh, in this dream run what can one or two things that keeps you busy and narayan and the team uh, what is the biggest challenge what are the biggest couple of risks that you foresee uh, that can somewhat puncture this uh, uh, phenomenal uh, dream run that you are going through see i will ask narayan to answer this later first let me tell you that we both are very excited thank you for patiently waiting we have mr dinesh takka he can ask so you can go ahead please so what i was saying that opportunity is quite huge in india if we have to serve this kind of like millennials with a low ticket size we have to work out lots of solutions so what we are saying is a, a great future there is nothing like which can like spoil this kind of an party because our youth population is just started earning so we see a big opportunity and fortunately for angel we are able to attract good talent so we feel we'd be able to give solution to this youth narayan if you want to add on this yeah, yes so as uh, dinesh mentioned right this market is just it's a very very early stage market the market opportunity is at least 10x more than what it is today so the thing that keeps me up is how should we think about ways to launch newer and better products and get them in the hands of these customers how do we build better journeys better experiences so that the first time experience for anybody who is entering the space is very fulfilling and for somebody who is a mature investor they are able to get more and more insights and more and more value continuously from the market so you know it's a very exciting opportunity but again there is so much more with it, you know the realm of possibilities is so huge especially with people from tier 3 and tier 4 cities now coming online that we have to build a product 
for all of them. We cannot just be building for tier one and tier two cities, right? We have customers everywhere. And that's where the big opportunity is for India. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Narayan and uh, Dinesh Bhai. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan Kunti. That was the last question. I would now like to have the conference over to Mr. Dinesh Bhakar, closing conference. I was unable to hear you. Also, would you like to add any closing remarks? No, closing remarks. Okay, fine, fine. We are done with question and answer? Yes. Sir. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us today on this earning call. India's fintech industry is at the cusp of strong growth. Players who were able to identify this opportunity early and will lead this growth. In digital era, there is a space for only few players. It is imperative that we keep investing in augmenting our technology infrastructure, human talent, and product and service offering to become leaders in this segment. With a strong corporate structure in place, Coupled with our superior product and service offering, I am confident that we, we are poised to achieve our goal of attaining the leadership position over the next couple of years, while keeping our profitability intact. There may be periods of interim ups and downs, but our nimbleness, expertise, and marketing initiatives will keep us ahead of the curve. I am certain Angel will play a dominant role in deepening the culture of systematic wealth creation across all segments and age groups in the long run. Our strategy to expand our product and service bouquet to include protection and sustained wealth creation product will play a vital role in this journey. With Narayan on board, I am sure you will witness a significant technological transformation in times to come. If you have any queries, please do reach out to our investor relations team or to SGA, our investor relations advisor. We wish you all a good day and a prosperous year ahead. Stay safe, stay strong. Thank you. Thank you.